Now we uh, go to what is called piloted ignition. Piloted ignition is the one where we need an external source like spark or pilot flame to accomplish the ignition. The just the hotness of the chamber will not be able to provide the ignition source. The, the temperature prevailing in the chamber will be less than that of the auto ignition temperature of the mixture. Okay, if uh, the temperature crosses the auto ignition, then auto ignition can take place. Otherwise, we need an external source to cause a localized uh, ignition. Okay, now for uh, analyzing this, uh, uh, Professor Foreman Williams have uh, given um, actually two uh, criteria. Uh, the criterion one is ignition will occur. We already seen this particular uh, uh, second point. We have seen the first point. We will see now. Ignition will occur when enough energy is added to uh, the gas okay uh, to heat a slab okay a slab let us take a slab like this so uh, energy is added to the slab basically this uh, this is a slab energy is added to the slab how much energy enough energy is added to the slab to accomplish what to increase the temperature of the slab so initially the temperature of the slab may be t naught to increase the temperature of the slab from T naught to T adiabatic flame temperature. So, T adiabatic. So, thus this heat which is added to this. So, you add heat to this, add heat to this slab such that the temperature of the slab increases from the initial value to the adiabatic flame temperature. Okay. What is the dimension of the slab? The slab has a thickness of delta which is the thickness of the steadily propagating laminar flame delta. So, if you have a region which is the reaction zones dimension which is of the reaction zones time dimension and if that, uh, that particular region uh, is uh, increased from its initial temperature of T naught to adiabatic flame temperature then ignition occurs. That is it. So, that is the, so that means that you are forming a flame which is going to now consume the other. So, you have a localized region where the flame is formed first. The flame has a typical thickness of a laminar premix flame. So, which is delta and uh, if you can heat up this region to adiabatic flame temperature that means you accomplish ignition there. Okay, that is one of the things. So, for that you need to add enough energy. So, what is the minimum energy which we need to add? That is one of the criteria we should see. Second one is what we already seen. The rate of liberation of heat that is heat which is released by the chemical reactions inside this slab of delta thickness must approximately balance the rate of heat loss from the slab. Okay, now, here you can say conduction. So, this is Q l dot i will say so this is the rate at which the heat is lost okay so this basically the um, by thermal conduction in the previous case uh, uh, where the mixture was uh, fed inside convection heat transfer was predominant in this case there is a still uh, premix gas a localized uh, ignition is provided at a particular point so by conduction the heating is taking place so thermal conduction is assumed here. So, the rate of liberation of heat by the chemical reactions inside the slab of delta thickness must approximately, so this, this will provide a heat uh, generation. Okay. So, this is heat generated, volumetric heat generated. So, I will say R. Okay. That is the heat which is uh, due to reaction which is generated. Uh, this is heat which is added uh, to this. So, now this and uh, QL should match that is the balance here. If that balance occurs, we already seen the critical point Q r was equal to is, uh, was equal to Q l. Similarly, here the heat which is generated by the chemical reaction should balance the heat lost. Uh, so, uh, when I say approximately it will be slightly higher the heat which is liberated will be slightly higher than the heat which is lost. By thermal conduction we are going to consider thermal conduction here. Okay. So, predominantly when there is a mixture which is not moving, we provide a spark to ignite it or any uh, other uh, pilot ignition, we will do it. So, mainly we are going to talk about the, the spark ignition in this case. 
Okay, now, for this what we should do is we should consider a spherical volume of uh, say value V meter cube and uh, this is uh, having a premix reactant in the flammability limits. As I told you the mixture should be ignitable it should not be uh, it should not be leaner than the lean flammability value or uh, richer than the rich flammability limit. Okay, now, we will apply the second criteria of Williams that is nothing but the heat liberated should balance the heat lost. Okay. Okay, now, um, this volume the spherical volume, okay. so this is volume is V and uh, let us take radius of this spherical volume as R and we call this radius as critical radius RC because this is the minimum volume which will be required to cause ignition. That means, if you take a volume with a radius, spherical volume with a radius which is less than RC, then the heat which is liberated cannot balance the heat which is lost. So, this heat will be liberated here in this, okay, that is lost to this surrounding. Now, this should match if the R value that is the radius is less than the critical radius, then the volume volumetric heat generation cannot match the heat loss. So, that means that the critical radius is assumed here where ignition will occur. So, what is that value? Okay, now, again we try to balance the heat which is generated uh, with the conductive heat loss. Okay, so, now here again this is the negative term you can see this negative term is the, the rate of consumption of fuel. So, that is negative. So, negative negative is positive into delta H c which is the heat of combustion and this is the volume of this um, the, the spherical volume 4 by 3 pi r cube. So, here the r is critical radius. Okay, now, that will be heat which is uh, lost by conduction that is this here this is negative because heat flows in the direction of decreasing temperature. So, this negative sign appears because this is negative and 4 pi r square uh, which is the surface area. And this is the thermal conductivity. Okay. Now, this is heat which is lost by conduction. If they are balanced, then ignition can occur. So, if they are balanced, actually the left hand side will be slightly higher than the right hand side. So, heat generated, as we already seen, is the product of average fuel consumption rate omega dot F triple dash, average fuel consumption rate and uh, multiplied by the heat of combustion delta H c and the volume of the reactant which is 4 by 3 pi r c cube. So, heat conduction is analyzed by the furious law where it is the product of uh, surface area 4 pi r square thermal conductivity and temperature gradient. Temperature gradient in this case is negative. So, negative uh, sign appears there. Okay. So, the heat actually the heat flow direction is in the uh, decreasing uh, temperature uh, direction. So, when ignition occurs, a small volume of reactants considered will be burnt. Okay. Okay, now, please understand that. So, this volume, small volume, what we are considering, critical volume, what we are considering, that is the minimum volume, uh, the, it will burn. So, that the temperature of that will be T f. Okay. So, T f, it is, it, is going, it is going to be assumed to be homogeneous also. So, once the, the instantaneously burns, then the temperature reaches from the initial temperature to the flame temperature. So, at R equal to R c, we can say the temperature is T f, which is the flame temperature. Now, as R goes to infinity, okay, so you can see this is the, uh, so this has burnt now, so temperature is T f. So, R equal to R c here, okay, R c temperature is T f, T f and uh, it actually decreases asymptotically to a value of T infinity. Okay. So, this is T f and uh, R is increased here. So, this is uh, at a very far R. So, R infinity I will say. So, this is R equal to R s. Okay. So, this asymptotically reaches the uh, ambient temperature of uh, T infinity. So, T infinity is the ambient temperature. So, this is a exponential decay and asymptotically it reaches asymptotically means very after long distance radial distance the temperature reaches T infinity. Correct? So, for this case the heat which is conducted at the surface is lost by convection. 
So, the Nusselt number for this limiting case of asymptotic analysis is n equal to 2. So, Nusselt number will be equal to 2, this is known to us by the analysis. So, uh, heat conducted at the surface is transported by the convection to the ambient. So, that means 4 pi r square into thermal conductivity into temperature gradient will be equal to some h value, h value into again the same area through which the uh, heat is conducted will be converted out that is 4 pi r square into delta t, delta t is t of minus t infinity. Okay. Now, for this limiting case we know the Nusselt number is 2 okay, exponentially and asymptotically reaching the value of uh, t infinity. So, now what is Nusselt number? Nusselt number is defined as h h some characteristic dimension d divided by k of the gas. Now, this characteristic dimension is now the diameter of the diameter, taking the diameter of the volume that is a spherical volume. So, that is this is equal to 2 times R c. So, h into 2 times R c by thermal conductivity of the gas that is lambda is equal to 2. Now, you know that. So, now you can write the temperature gradient d t by d r calculated R c obviously at that surface will be equal to now d arrange the term h is there here h uh, 2 R c I multiply by 2 R c and divide by 2 R c divided by this lambda from the left hand side comes here lambda. So, this is the Nusselt number basically. So, this is a nu which is equal to 2 that also we know that into T of my T infinity divided by 2 R c what we have multiplied and divided here 4 pi R c square cancels here. So, now this as a value of 2. So, 2 and 2 cancels. So, the temperature gradient can be written as the flame temperature minus the ambient temperature divided by the critical radius R c. So, just to get the temperature gradient in terms of temperature and radius, we have done this small analysis of uh, considering the heat which is conducted from the surface of the sphere, what we considered is lost to the ambient by convection, uh, it is actually a natural convection basically. So, we can see that the uh, asymptotic value of this uh, scenario is uh, Nusselt number equal to 2, when you substitute Nusselt number equal to 2, you get the temperature gradient as T of minus T infinity by R c, so natural convection. So, when you add force convection, the Nusselt number value increases from 2. So, in this scenario, we get the dt by dr at Rc as T of minus T infinity by Rc. So, this expression is now used in the heat balance equation. So, substituting that. So, now, when you substitute uh, minus omega uh, dot f triple dash delta c, the volume heat generated equal to heat loss 4 by R square lambda dt by dr at d radius at rc is written as t of minus t infinity by rc or you get an expression for rc as rc square equal to 3 lambda into t of minus t infinity divided by omega dot triple dash into delta hc. Okay, okay. So, now we put uh, see we know we know the expression for sl from the simplified analysis where sl equal to minus 2 alpha 1 plus s that is we are considering an equation 1 kg of fuel plus s kg of oxidizer giving 1 plus s kg of products. So, in this equation 1 plus x is the mass of the product which is produced per kg of fuel. So, that 1 plus s into omega dot triple dash that is this average this average um, reaction rate fuel consumption rate. Okay. So, this we know. So, for omega dot triple dash here we can apply this in terms of SL we can write. Similarly, delta H c can be written as mass of the products, this is mass of the product into C p which is assumed to be constant for reactants and products into delta T. Delta T is nothing but T of minus T infinity. So, actually the product carries the heat away from the reaction zone. So, to the ambient. So, as it travels the temperature of the product slowly decreases to the ambient temperature at after a long distance. So, delta C m C p delta t, so that we can substitute here. So, when you substitute this, you can see T of minus T infinity of this delta C term will cancel with the numerator. Similarly, when you substitute for omega dot triple f, uh, f triple dash uh, in terms of S L and uh, do the algebra, we can get this value. So, now the critical radius. 
is nothing but square root of 6 times alpha by SL. Okay, please understand that this uh, square root of 6 etc is not accurate value because you can see that uh, in this several assumptions are made. See for example, uh, this uh, first of all this is a uh, single step reaction. Then uh, we are uh, taking uh, some asymptotic uh, value of uh, result number. Then uh, this SL itself is got from several assumptions. So, the, there is no significance of this value uh, square root of 6. This may be varying little bit. So, it is not a problem. So, you can see that uh, when you write alpha by SL as uh, 2 uh, uh, delta by 2. no. So, delta by 2 is alpha by SL that is uh, delta equal to 2 alpha by SL. So, you know this. So, if you substitute this, you will get uh, this value. So, we can say that RC is a few times than the flame thickness, that is it. So, what uh, Foreman's analysis is, we have to have a slab of thickness uh, which is equivalent to the flame, laminar flame thickness. So, that is what we are trying to get here also. So, this is almost RC is proportional to the flame thickness and this proportionality is a few times larger say maybe 1.2, 1.52 something like that. So, few times larger than the laminar flame thickness is the critical dimension. So, the, the volume, volume any any volume uh, ha, can be taken as a single dimensional thing. So, for example, the dimension of the volume can be a spherical volume can be radius, okay. Dimension of a cube can be its side and so on, uh, cube, uh, cube can be side and so on. So, Similar to that, you can uh, take the uh, critical dimension of ignition that is RC. It may not be spherical, no? so I am saying dimension here, you know, I am not saying radius. So, critical dimension of ignition can be few times larger than the laminar flame thickness, that is what we are going to analyze here. So, it is very important to understand the uh, uh, logic here. So, the thing is, uh, if you if you need not you not have a very big uh, volume to ignite you need only a smaller volume to ignite, that volume will be in the order of the flame thickness. That is what we need to understand here. Okay. Now, so uh, it should be noted that the constant value root, root 6 by 2 is not an accurate value as the expressions have resulted from simplifying assumptions. Okay. However, the dependency of RC, dependency of RC on thermal diffusivity here alpha a laminar flame speed SL or the flame thickness del is illustrated clearly that we have to understand. Okay. So, we have found the first criteria where the minimum amount of uh, charge or the premixed uh, reactant mixture which is required to cause ignition. Now, second criteria is how, how much energy has to be supplied. The first criteria is the energy, enough energy should be supplied. So, what is that? So, for this we need minimum energy of ignition that is the how will analyze it. So, energy added right, first criteria of Williams to the pilot source like is used to heat the reaction mixture from the initial value to the flame temperature. So, criteria criterion 1 of Williams. Okay. So, here criterion 1 ignition will occur only if enough energy is added to this uh, to heat a slab uh, as thick as that is RC is the critical thickness of the uh, spherical volume what you consider uh, which is proportional to del the flame thickness. So, we have to increase the temperature from the initial value which is the ambient temperature to adiabatic flame temperature. So, we write here the ignition energy should be equal to Mc mass of the charge which is nothing but the mass of the burnt mixture also that because the entire charge will burn to cause ignition. So, mass of the charge M c will be equal to the mass of the burnt mixture into C p of this into I have to increase the temperature from the initial value which is T infinity to the flame temperature T f. So, that is what the energy which is required for cause ignition E i g is the energy to cause ignition will be equal to the mass of the charge M c which is the mass of the burnt mixture also into C p which is the specific heat into delta t t f minus t infinity. Okay. The mass of the burnt mixture is what 
the volume critical volume that is nothing but 4 by 3 pi critical radius cube into density of the burnt mixture. So, that is the mass. Okay. Now, the minimum ignition energy in joules can be returned. So, substitute this and substitute the value of Rc etcetera. Rc you know root 6 by 2 into del. Okay. Then, uh, so del is nothing but uh, 2 alpha by SL. Right. So, del equal to 2 alpha by SL. Then uh, Rc itself is equal to uh, this uh, root uh, 6 by 2 times del and so on. From the analysis what we have got, just substitute them, you get the minimum ignition energy which will cause the ignition because you are applying this to the minimum volume uh, which is required, correct? The, you know, enough volume of this. 61.6 times uh, density of the burnt gas Cp delta T, T of minus T infinity into alpha by SL cube, that R cube term, RC cube term will contribute to this. Okay. Now, from this you can understand that Eig depends on temperature, pressure and equivalence ratio because SL depends on temperature, pressure and equivalence ratio okay, and so on. Similarly, alpha also depends on all these three. Correct? Alpha is what? Alpha is the thermal diffusivity that is lambda by rho Cp. So, this also depends upon the uh, equivalence ratio. Okay? If more air is there, less fuel is there, then the properties itself will vary. Correct? Similarly, uh, density is a function of pressure and so on. So, you can you can see this, uh, the, the ignition energy is dependent on all the uh, parameters like temperature, pressure and equivalence ratio. Okay. Now, if you increase T infinity, obviously, we uh, already it is not auto ignition temperature, but it is less than the auto, auto ignition temperature. T infinity is less than the auto ignition temperature. But within the range, if you try to increase T infinity, the extra energy which is required to be provided to the mixture is low. So, the Eig will de decrease with increase in T infinity. That is understandable. Similarly, uh, seeing these dependencies, we can say that uh, Eig will be proportional to P power minus 2. Okay? Especially considering second order reaction. So, second order reaction is considered n equal to 2 is considered here and uh, for that by substituting the pressure dependence of all the terms here, that is this uh, rho b is pressure dependent, alpha is pressure dependent, SL is pressure dependent, we know this. When you do this, you get overall pressure dependency of Eig as p power minus 2. Okay, now, consider one more aspect of this, lean fuel mixture we will take, lean fuel mixture, okay, that is phi is less than 1. Okay, with the low value of phi, try to increase the phi, okay, or from uh, say from uh, equivalence ratio of say uh, 0 0.9, okay, 0 0.9, it decreased to say 0 0.4 or something, okay. As the fuel content decreases, you need more energy to ignite, obviously, because the heat generation will be reduced when the equivalence ratio reduces, then what happens? The fuel content decreases. So, heat generation will drop so that you need more energy to ignite for a given T infinity or you have to increase T infinity. So, these are the some observations which we can make from this. So, to achieve pyrated ignition, you need to go for a yeah, minimum volume of the charge premix reactants and minimum ignition energy to cause the ignition. Okay? So, two types of ignition process we have seen auto ignition which is the temperature at which the premix reactants based see this is not a, uh, a universal temperature for a given fuel for a given equivalence ratio unburnt reactant temperature etc there is a particular temperature called auto ignition temperature uh, when when that is reached then the ignition is uh, uh, accomplished the auto ignition will take place we don't need external source of igniter there on the other hand if you take pyrated ignition you need to use spark or any pyrated flame etc the energy supplied by the spark or the pyrated flame, pilot flame uh, should be yeah, of a minimum value which is given here and uh, this should be applied to a minimum volume of the reactants also. Okay? So, these are the important things. Okay, the next topic is uh, uh, flame quenching, we have seen the ignition, okay? so ignition, please understand this ignition also is a transient process. Now, the flame quenching uh, is also a transient process. Now, we are considering flame quenching by walls. 
Okay, so how it can quench? For example, if you have a so for this, do you consider uh, two parallel walls like this? Two parallel walls through which there are from premix reactants are there here. Now a flame, this is the flame actually, this, this zone is the flame zone with the thickness delta. Okay, now this flame is trying to propagate down, consuming the premix reactants. The propagation of this flame, so we have maybe you have ignited somewhere here, so the flame is formed and the flame is coming down. What is the diameter of this or the distance between these two walls? which will be necessary for the flame to propagate or we can also do otherwise like what is the value of d which will prevent the flame to propagate you can see both criteria so either the distance should be sufficient enough for the flame to propagate if you want the flame to be propagated down or if you don't want the flame to propagate what will be the diameter which will prevent that we can see both so for this we have to use Williams second criteria okay so what we are trying to do is we are considering a premix flame which is propagating in a space between two parallel walls uh, vertical oriented walls and uh, for this to propagate what is the criteria for the propagation determined by the Williams second uh, point second criterion which is nothing but the uh, the heat release should balance the heat loss to the walls by conduction. Here obviously the wall does the conduction. So the stationary mixture is there, flame is propagating down and uh, losing the heat through the walls and uh, what will be the uh, balance here. So the heat generated in the flame is Q triple dash into volume. Okay, Q triple dash is watt per meter cube into volume is meter cube. So this is the heat which is generated released and what is heat lost is the heat loss by the conduction I am putting total here considering the two surfaces okay. So now heat released is evaluated as usual heat release is evaluated by the net reaction rate and heat of combustion okay we already seen how to do this heat loss now temperature gradient of the wall thermal conductivity Fourier's law okay so let us apply this. So you have to understand that here what we are trying to do is we are trying to see yeah space the dimension of a space through which the flame can propagate if the dimension is more the flame will surely, will surely propagate we are trying to know the minimum dimension of the space between two parallel plates it can be a, a circular tube also or the diameter of the circular tube through which the flame is going to propagate okay if the diameter is less than that or the dimension d is less than this value what you are going to estimate now then the flame will not be able to propagate. So we have several applications for this let us see. So now what is Q triple dash is nothing but the rate of consumption of the fuel omega dot F triple dash into the delta C. Heat loss by the conduction is uh, thermal conductivity into area into dt by dx. Okay. So now this Q dot uh, this will be kilogram per meter cube second and this will be kg Oh, sorry a joule per kilogram joule per kilogram so now this will be uh, joule per uh, so watt per meter cube so when you multiply that by the volume here meter cube you get watt so q dot q triple dash into volume will be in watts okay so right hand side already we have this is watt per meter kelvin and the area is meter square and this will be kelvin by meter so now you get this as watts. So when you do Q, da, Q triple dash into volume and uh, that can be balanced with uh, Q conduction. So that we are going to balance now. Okay, now uh, before doing that, this is very important to understand how will you uh, ex estimate the temperature gradient. Okay, now please understand uh, the temperature gradient basically is uh, so if you take this uh, two parallel plates here. So this is D, D okay. Now maximum temperature here is T flame 
and this will be T wall. Okay, so worst case scenario if you take, so the gradient I want gradient at the wall. Please understand. So I have to go near to this. Once see since heat is lost in this direction, in this direction heat is lost. Correct in both directions basically heat is lost. So the in the flame zone since heat is lost from both the directions, the temperature Tf cannot be uniform, and suddenly lose uh, to the wall. We suddenly reach the wall temperature Tw. So there is a there is a temperature profile for this. From a maximum value of Tf, it goes to T wall. So it so if you say this, this is the uh, say uh, Tf Tf, and it decreases to T wall T wall within the distance of say d by two. So but this profile, what we have that I want to calculate the gradient near to the wall. If it is linear, then it's fine. If it, but it will not be linear. So, uh, what happens here near the wall? The gradient. How will you estimate this gradient? That is the question. Correct. So, what is the minimum value? Like uh, this gradient will assume. The minimum value the gradient will assume is T F minus T wall divided by. Sorry. T by 2 that is the minimum it will assume minimum value of this gradient will be this but you know very near to the wall this will not be correct so the, the gradient of uh, estimated by this expression will be under predicted actually so you, this this cannot be applied this can be applied only as an approximation so how to improve this we will see.